Um, so he's all baked. Um, he's all ready to be moulded. So uh, we're going to start that today. So the first thing we need to do is make a pour spout on his head. And what I tend to do with the smaller the smaller sculpts is actually put them on their head for moulding. Um, the reason being you can get to every single part of it. So we use the pour spout also as a a kind of a base for him to stand on. So what I'm going to do is put a bit of a, a lump at the top for the start of the spout, bake that on and then make a much bigger one to hold him. If I do a bigger one to start with there's a chance it'll he'll, he'll sort of move in the oven and end up toppling over because it needs to be fairly fairly steady really. So I'm just going to make, uh, I'm just getting an ordinary piece of clay um, and I'm going to just put a blob on the top of his head where I think the, the pour spout needs to be. Now I tend to take it further back because when you um, demould the baby if there's a pour spout you have to cut that off and you have to patch it up um, and it can be quite difficult getting a really good finish so the further back it is the better it is because it's not going to be visible if he's going to have hair so I'm just going to pop a bit of um, clay on his head and secure it as much as I can Some people put quite a, a small um, spout on the on the bit that actually fastens to his head because obviously the, the larger it is the more there is to patch up afterwards. Um, but I don't want to risk him toppling over when I'm, when I'm uh, moulding him. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to get his balance about right and put a bit of a squash in it. I think that is probably... yep. Obviously that's too small to have him actually standing on, but I'm going to go and bake that onto him and then I'll make a bigger one that he can actually sit on. Okay, I'll be back in a bit. Okay, little bubbles out the, out the oven. Um, so I'm going to just build up this um, pour spout a little bit uh, to make it a bit even more, more stable. I'm just going to put another piece of clay over the one that's cemented on his head and hope it doesn't come off and balance him there we are I'm going to go and bake this again just to make sure oh, his willy's fallen off. <laughs> That's not something you often you say very often, is it? Right, I'm going to glue that back on. I'll I'll do it off camera. It's probably not something you should you should ever really do on camera. Okay, now baby's out the oven, um, and I've put some glue some uh, a, from a glue gun I've used on the uh, on the board that I'm going to make the mould and um, hopefully that will stick it um, I don't really want to use a glue that is going to um, mess up the mess up the the board um, obviously if you're using monster clay to make your baby <laughs> don't use hot gun, don't use hot glue because um, it'll melt the clay. Um, you, you're probably sitting there thinking well that's just stupid, who would do that? But actually I did that, I actually made um, a baby in monster clay <laughs> and thought oh that's a good idea, I'll use a hot gun to, uh, to, fax it, to fasten it onto the surface and um, it, it it wasn't a good idea, so um, yeah, I, I really am that stupid. So uh, so that's ready. One once the uh, 
once the glue's hardened it's ready now for me to do the first coat of, of silicone so we'll hang on till that happens. Okay the first thing I like to do, um, I've mixed some of my mould dragon skin for moulding, is just paint over the bottom bit um, to make sure that it's it's really firm. The last thing you want when you're halfway through a coat of dragon skin is the uh, the mould falling over. So I like to make sure that the seal between the um, the plug and the not plug between the pour spout and the base, and also between the um, head and the pour spout is really really firm and the best way of doing that really is to is to do the first coat first couple of coats of, of dragon skin it it helps to hold it up so the one that's um, firm so I'm just going to do that that layer and uh, I'm doing a couple of other moulds at the same time so I'm going to do it on those as well and then once that's um, firm I'll feel happier handling the um, Handling the whole thing. So I sort of plaster it on over the uh, over the joins. Okay. Okay. So um, just talking a bit about the actual dragon skin. Uh, I use dragon skin ten for um, for molding for for making the glove mold. Uh, it's in two parts A and B. Um, so I put equal quantities of A. and B in the pot and mix it around and then I add a pigment. Now I do pigments in different stages. I'll use one colour until I've got a really good coating on it and there's no transparency showing through and then I'll change to a different colour colour and do the same thing again. So with this one I'm starting with the white, so I'll just get some white silicon pigment and um, just add a little bit so that I can see the colour going on. Now I use, um, there, there are um, I think three or four different um, dragon skin tan, it, basically it's, it's how fast it cures. There's um, I think medium, uh, fast and very fast. Um, I have to say I, I use the very fast because I, I work quite quickly and I like it to go on, I like to be able to do another coat over the top fairly quickly. A lot of people do find that way too fast. So um, it's it's one of those things, it's completely up to you. I think, I think actually most people use medium. So I'm just applying it to everything. The first coat is the most important and it goes on reasonably thinly. And you have to make sure you get into every little bit, every little nook and cranny. Um, sometimes it's best to stipple it so that you know you just you basically what you wanting to do is just cover the whole surface with silicone now this very fast um, silicone I use just the little pots because to be honest you don't want to use you don't want to mix up too much at once and of course it's ideal for these this size of um, sculpt because you know a little pot like this will will virtually cover a good a good percentage of it so what I'm aiming for at the moment is just covering everything on a with a very <coughs> a very thin coat no bubbles make sure you've not got any air bubbles 
doesn't matter that it's completely transparent so you can see everything through it. It's just it's just coating it. Getting a really good tight adhesion with the with the mount with the um mould with with the sculpt, sorry. I can't think and uh, and do at the same time, so I say some nonsense things. Brush wise, um, just use a cheap, a cheap brush. Um, you'll you'll ruin loads of brushes doing this. I always do. Um, so I would. <coughs> I always use brushes that I don't have a problem if it needs to be thrown away when I've used it. Um, but you need a brush that's not going to leave bristles behind. Nothing worse than having to pick bristles off it. So, a reasonably cheap brush, but you know, one that's um, going to be reasonable quality. So make sure you get into all the little creases. <coughs> so as you can see, even though it's coating it just very lightly, it's it's still showing the flesh colour through. Um, the more coats we put on, the, la the more white it will become, and then once it's completely white and there's nothing showing, then we can change the colour to a different colour. much if it drips down onto your board because um, it, it just can be peeled off afterwards once it's cured. The pigments you use for silicone are the same pigments you use for painting silicone. Um, the special uh, pigments made for silicone you can't use. You can't use Genesis or or other things that you would use for reborning. You have to use uh, proper silicone products. So I'm going to uh, switch the video off and do the rest of this not on video because um, there's not much really to see. There's nothing uh, very special about this. Just a, just a, a case of doing it. 
and uh, I'll put it back on for the uh, the next coat. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm just about to start the second layer of silicone. Um, I've diluted this down a teeny bit just so it flows a bit better. Um, it's it's quite thick dragon skin, so you can you can water it, you can dilute it with uh, with thinners. Um, sometimes you want it thicker, say for the final layers. Sometimes you want it thinner, and at the moment I just want it to flow a bit better. As I say, this this is dragon skin very fast. Um, it it really does cure very fast um, which is why I just do it in small pots at a time but it also means that almost as soon as you've put one layer on you can have a cup of tea and then you're ready to put a second layer another layer on top of it it layers very very quickly whereas the medium you're waiting for half a day for it to cure and I'm not the most patient person in the world and I don't have I only have certain times I can I can do my uh, my babies so um, when I do do them, I like to be able to do it, get quite a bit done. So every time you put a layer on, it gets a bit more opaque. Um, so I'm, I aim to do it so that you can't see any any of the previous colour through the through the colour through the uh, the coat that you're putting on. Uh, it's getting there. I might just put one more coat on after this so that it's completely white and then I'll change the colour and do start to do the same thing with with a different colour and I do at least three colours so that's if each colour is sort of three coats it's about nine coats but uh, there's no there's no rule of thumb there's no there's no um, way of saying you should do so many coats because I also thicken up at the end do the final coat with some thick sewing to thicken it up, give it a little bit more strength. Again, it depends from from sculpt to cut sculpt how much how much thickener I put in. Make sure that you get absolutely every bit, especially little pockets. You'll get you know, little pockets that are less strong. And they're the bits that where if your mould's going to fail, that's where it'll fail. The bits where it's not thick enough. But if you do it too thickly, you could end up with um, a mould that's too tight to come off. But these first few coats are the most important for getting into little little nicks, creases and, and air pockets. So again I'll do most of this off camera and be back later. Okay, um, I've done, I think, three coats of the white, and it's fairly well covered. So I'm going to turn. I'm going to go into the uh, a different colour now. So I've mixed up a, a pot of pink or red or whatever you call it, and I'm just going to do the same with that. So I'll do two or three coats of the pink until it's coated completely, and then I'll change colour again. So. Uh, is doing this really. I'm not diluting it anymore. I don't need it uh, to be fine. Uh, I just need it to be a really good coating and stick stick well to the previous coats. I'm going to switch the uh, video off again. 
to you in a bit. Okay, that's just got a really good covering of uh, of the pink um, silicone dragon skin. So I'm going to put on the uh, the next colour. Um, now it's got a really thick coat on. I can I can start putting it on even a lot more thickly and uh, <coughs> and less less carefully because there's not as many. Uh, it's got a really good coating on the actual sculpt. So um, I go into sort of like larger brushes or or even scap um, even just just um, sticks or whatever to put it on, um, and it can go on quite thickly and quite quickly. There'll be uh, quite a lot of drips. Um, try to get rid of any air bubbles that form, any large air bubbles anyway, in it. But um, it's just a case of um, firming it up now, getting um, a thicker coating on. And um, after this we'll be doing um, a thickened coat. So. It's a case of, uh, I'll just mix some more. I haven't actually got any uh, larger pots than this at the moment. They're on order. So, um, actually, I think I can find one. So, okay, I'll come back. Okay, I have, you know, quite a thick um, coating of of um, this third colour on, on the baby now. And so I've taken her, him, her, him off the board and um, turn them upside down and you can see, I don't know if you can see from there, um, anyway, there are areas where being upside down the, um, the silicone's dripped down and underneath it's left sort of pockets of much lighter, this is why we change colour, um, I don't know if you can actually see it, you can see on the foot um, it's a bit better where it's not covered so well. So I've taken it off the off the board, and I'm going to fill in these bits that haven't been uh, that haven't been taken so well, um, and let it and let it um, cure, and then we can start thickening up the, the seam. Okay, so um, I've got some mixed silicone here and I'm going to apply it really quite thickly into these pocket areas so that it can, it can dribble in and um, fill the little uh, holes like little rock pools. Just to strengthen it up. We don't want any any really um, thin areas where it's not covered. It. So say this is why we change the colours as we go along because you can see where it hasn't covered a colour. And it's it's showing pink underneath. It's got no green on it at all. So I'm just going to fill these little pockets to strengthen it up. I'm working right handed here so that you can see it. I'm uh, not very good with my right hand, I'm left handed. So as you can see, it's it's um, it's really quite smooth now the outside because of uh, 
put so many coats on. So I've done about three coats of each of the colours and I've put three colours on so it's about about nine coats this. Um, if I'm going to do a much thicker layer over the whole thing I might do slightly less coats but usually I do I do three colours and I do a really good coating of each colour so it it basically takes two or three coats for each colour to really cover the the whole the whole mould. Um, if I'm doing um, a larger baby like a full size newborn um, I will also do quite a few thickened coats um, on top of that uh, but, but with this size baby I probably won't except I'll thicken the seam at the back. Right, I think I've covered everything. I need to let that cure, but I need to let it cure in an upright position so the silicone doesn't all dribble out. So um, I need to prop it up. So I'm going to find something to prop it up on while it's curing. That's a really good reason to get the very fast cure because it will literally be cured in, in five minutes. Um, Okay, I'll come back. Okay, so I have coated the baby completely in the three coats, three different coloured coats, completely uh, coated everywhere. I've looked for little holes and little little bits where where it might have gone thinner, and I'm really happy with with it being thick enough. Um, so what I need to do now is is put a thicker seam down the back so that I can cut it open um, and and close and reclose it as many times as I need to. So I need I need the seam down the back to be really thick. Um, so what I'm going to do is mix up some more dragon skin um, as I did before. I'm going to put probably a white colour with it this time because um, then it will be easier for showing how I cut the seam open when I come to take the, the uh, sculpt out of the mould. So I'm just putting A and B in here. And I'll add some white pigment. So this is the uh, simply the dragon skin that I was using before, and then I'm just going to add a few drops of Fixer Fix Tropic, which is uh, called Five X, um, just to thicken it up, so that I can thicken the the seam. X. I'm just going to add two or three drops to start with, or a little run, as that just ended up being. Sometimes there's a few seconds for it to actually activate, so it's better just to mix it around for a few seconds before you decide whether or not you want to add some more. No, that's it's still it's still moving so when I go like that it, it still slides down the side of the uh, cup. I want it so that it'll take its own form. Probably going to be enough. Always check when when using Thyvex that the silicone you're using is compatible with it. It's compatible with most silicones, but not all of them. Put a teeny bit more in. That should be 
fair enough, definitely. Yep. Starting to hold its own shape. So I'm going to apply it straight down the back from the pore spout right down to the bottom of the, the base of the spine. You can like um, you can build up the um, the thickness of the the seam with several coats, but I'm just going to see if I can just slop it straight on in one go. Right, I'm going to see if I can smooth it out a little bit because the mother mould is going to go, the shell mother, mother mould, it's like um, a hard shell, is going to go over this. So um, I don't want it to be too uneven. So what I'm going to do is get a brush, I can find one, and gently smooth it with uh, oil. Okay, I'm just going to go and find a brush. Better to have all these things before you start, obviously. Okay, what I've got is um, simply vegetable oil. Um, it's my last coat, so I don't have a problem with it going over the top. And I'm just going to use it to smooth, smooth the last coat out like this. Reasonably smooth. So that seam must be a, a good, a good inch thick, really, uh, which is what we want. Okay, I'm going to leave that to cure, and then I can. Uh, Make the the mother mould, the shell mother mould. Okay. Okay. So uh, the that's cured now. That's the uh, the seam. Uh, we'll be cutting into that when we when we take the the actual sculpt out of it. But now we need to do the hard mother mould, the shell that keeps the uh, glove in position when the uh, when we pour the silicone in. So I use a product called Freeform Air which is a d a, like a dough. Uh, it's in two parts like the silicone is and uh, you mix the two parts together equal quantities and uh, it uh, it forms this hard shell. So I'm going to um, mix it up now. So I'll take I always wear uh, vinyl gloves for this because it's it's not it's not toxic or anything like that, but it's it's a bit nasty when you get it on your hands. It will wash off with water, um, but it's it's not very nice. It's really sticky. So I use I use gloves when I'm mixing it. Um, here we are. 
so I take a sort of tennis ball shaped size lump out of each bucket and uh, that's the B the same with part A So you mix half and half by volume with this, not by weight. There we are. So there are my two pieces. I'm just going to mix them together, and uh, once the once the two, the grey and the white, become all one colour, you know it's well mixed and it softens. It goes softer as you mix it, and it also um, as it starts to harden, it goes um, it it goes hot. It goes quite warm. So um, they say that the the cure time varies depending on the amount of freeform air you've got. Apparently, the the dense the, the, the thicker the piece, the bigger the piece, the quicker it uh, cures. I think. Um, don't know how that works, but anyway, maybe it's just something to do with the heat. Um, I'm not sure what the cure time is, I think it's about something like an hour and a half um, but usually um, it takes about 24 hours to reach its full um, strength um, it, even though it feels hard it can be kind of sticky to the touch not, not to the touch but sort of kind of toffee like it feels hard but it's, it's kind of got a toffee kind of um, feel to it. Um, can't describe it really but once it's dry it's completely bone dry once it's cured so uh, and it, it's full strength then so really you're better waiting until it's at full strength before you take the sculpt out of it. Um, so I'm going to make half, I do it in two parts, I do the mother, mother, um, mother mould in two parts, front and back usually and um, so I'm doing the, the back this evening and I'll do the front tomorrow so um, and then I'll let it um, cure for another 24 hours then before I take the sculpt out of it. Well that's a theory anyway, I don't always, I'm not always um, patient enough to wait but then sometimes I regret it because uh, I break the mould taking it out. So this, this stuff is weird stuff, it's very lightweight, it's very easy to, to um, need, or fairly easy to need, much easier than things like the, um, it's an, I think it's an epoxy dough, it's much easier than things like Milliput and um, there's another one that Smooth On make, uh, this one's called Freeform Air, I think there's one called um, Freeform, free, free Sculpt or something, I'm not too sure what it's called. Anyway, um, this one is definitely the one that I prefer. So it's getting quite soft now. And the, uh, the colour of the dough is getting to be um, all one colour. So once it's completely the colour is completely even and I can start um, then we can use it. If you don't mix it in properly it may not cure properly all over evenly. Right I think that's okay to use now. Maybe another couple of... Uh... A lot of people use um, pasta bandages for their mother mould. I, I never got on with them at all. I really don't like them. Um, and some people use um, fibreglass, you know, uh, resin fibreglass mould. So anyway, this is what I use. So I've got my mould here. So what I'm going to do is place the um, 
the putty along the back and mould it round so that it goes around half, half of the uh, sculpt. You don't have to cover absolutely everything. I usually leave out the arms, things like arms, ears, um, things that I might want to prod at as I'm curing the, uh, the, the, the pour, as I'm getting bubbles out and things. So, and I usually take it to underneath the foot. That way you can, um, you can stand up the mould on the mother mould when it's curing. Um, and the air bubbles will go up towards the pour spout. Right. I don't know if I'll need any more or not. Maybe okay. Sometimes on the smaller moulds, I don't even put a second, um, a front mould to it. I just have it almost like an armchair with the uh, sculpt sitting in the mother mould. Um, which gives it all the support you need, but I think with this one I will put a front front on it. I'll see how I feel when uh, when it's cured. So that's what it looks from the other side. So I leave a bit of a lip around, I only take it to halfway point, a bit of a lip so that if we do a front a front mould it can butt up against it. There we are, I think that's all I'm going to do. Make sure it's not gone past the halfway point though because you'll never get your sculpt out, out of it. There we are. Put it back round and it's going to just lay on, on its front while it cures. Make it as smooth as possible. I don't like jaggedy edges. Jaggedy moulds. Well, the gloves just tend to give it wrinkles anyway. Be careful that you're not um, getting any any stuff on on your wooden board because it will stick. It'll stick to just about any surface. This um, preformer, apart from silicone, actually, you don't have to worry about putting a release agent on your silicone but it will stick to things like your wooden board. <coughs> so uh, just, just be careful it doesn't touch your board or you'll never get it off. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that um, overnight to cure and then I'll turn it over and do, um, do, some, do, do the same thing on the front. Okay. Okay, now the, uh, the mother mold is absolutely solid. Um, I've left it at least 24 hours actually to harden. It's as hard as a rock, absolutely solid, um, really, really strong. So I'm going to do the front part now. Um, first of all, I, when I do the front what, what part, it's going to get butted up against the back and I don't want it to stick to it. So I'm going to apply some a release, release agent, which I use uh, beeswax. It's just... I don't know, there's probably quite a few, well, honey wax, probably quite a few things that work. This works for me, um, so I stick to it. Some people use Vaseline, I never found that particularly um, good. Um, anyway, uh, this is what I use, honey wax or beeswax. Um, so I apply that quite liberally. Don't mind if I get it on the silicone um, mould at all, doesn't matter. Um, 
I don't need to apply wax, I don't need to apply any, any release agent to the silicone because it'll come off that, but I do to the, uh, the, other, the other half of the mould. don't want the two pieces sticking together because um, I'll never get it out if I do that. Okay, so that's that. So all we need to do now is apply the front part of the mould. Now I don't cover it 100%. Um, I always leave the feet and the hands out, often a lot of the um, legs and arms out. If there are any ears sticking out, I leave those out um, so I can manipulate those while, it's, while I'm pouring. Um, that ear is already in, this one isn't. So I may leave a bit of a space there, or I might just cover it over. Um, it's a human baby, so it's not a, a long elf ear, so it should be okay. So I've got my um, freeform air, which I mixed uh, just now. Um, and I'm going to apply it. So I'm going to apply it across, I may apply it in two or three parts. I'm going to put it across the head so that it covers the uh, the head, keeps that nice and uh, in, in the position. The whole point of this is to keep the silicone um, in exactly the position that it's in now. So when I take the sculpt out from within this, if you imagine this is like um, it's like a rubber glove, it's like a thick rubber glove. So at the moment the clay is inside the rubber glove, so it's holding its form. So I'm putting the shell over the top of this, then I'll take the clay out and it will leave the rubber glove. Now, it, if I poured silicone into a rubber glove, it's just going to go all over the place. Whereas, put the rubber glove back inside the hard shell, it keeps its, its, its shape. For when I put the silicone in, it'll keep it into the exact position I want it. But I don't need it covering 100% of the um, of the mould, so I'm just going to butt it up against that the two sides here and here, and then I think what I'm going to do is take a piece down and up against this bottom part, so I don't need a full piece. Um, I'm just going to do that. Then I can I can manipulate the toes. I can I can feel the fingers and the toes. I can squeeze them squeeze any air out of them um, and the same with the the feet but it again it holds that shape in the tummy so that there's no there's no bellying so that should be okay a bit more on the bottom here so again that will need to be left for about um, well, I'll leave it overnight and uh, take it off tomorrow and then that's the mould done and all we need to do then is uh, take the mould off, take the sculpt out and then we can uh, pour it. Okay. Okay, both sides of the mother mould are now completely hard. Um, so I'm going to attempt to prise them apart. Now you have to do this very gently. Um, sometimes it's more difficult than others. Um, so what I'm going to do is just tap between the two shells. Um, occasionally you do get them break. Um, you can mend them fairly easily, but it's it's ideal. It's not ideal to have them break. So if you tap them all the way around. Um, I just sort of ease a screwdriver between the two moulds. Sometimes you find that you've got a bit where the mould release didn't, um, if, you know, didn't, you missed a bit, and those two pieces are stuck stuck tight together. I can feel it's, it's starting to give now, so we're going to be okay, I think. front part off so that's what we got right this is the more difficult bit <laughs> sometimes is getting the uh, actual sculpt out it's not stuck it, it doesn't stick but it's sometimes wedged so tight you do have to don't worry about 
at this stage about breaking the inside sculpt. The most important thing is getting it out without actually damaging the um, glove mould. So just occasionally you know, your um, screwdriver will go through the glove, glove mould and you'll have to mend it. Um, so it's just a case of easing it gradually again. It's a horrible feeling when you feel all your baby breaking up inside but um, it's sometimes necessary. There we go, she's coming out, or he, he's coming out. I keep forgetting what baby this one is because I'm, I'm actually moulding three at the moment. I keep forgetting which one I'm doing at any one time. This is why it's important not to go very much past the halfway point because it's quite difficult to actually lever the baby out of the, uh, the mould. It's not so bad once the, uh, the silicone's in the baby when you actually come to take the, the baby out of the mould when it's poured because of course it's soft and pliable but while it's got the hard um, the hard um, clay sculpt inside just a case of easing it, there we go, there's a good boy. So he's out um, and there's his, so this will fit together it looks odd, but it's, it fits in perfectly. Fits together a bit like a, oops, a bit like a, a tortoise shell. That's how it'll fit together once the um, glove moulds back inside, ready to pour, and it just supports him. As I say, it's like a tortoise shell. It it fits together perfectly. Um, so I'll show you how to do that when the time comes. So here he is. So what we have to do now is cut down the seam. So we, we don't do it in a straight line, we do it in a like a key pattern, a Greek key pattern I think it's called, which means that when we come to pour it we can put it together exactly and it locks together and we, we actually glue it together with silicone so um, it doesn't come apart, oh, it, the, the silicone doesn't run through. Um, okay, so I'm just going to clear up a bit before I start doing that. One thing I forgot to mention, I always write the name of the sculpt on the mother mould because it's amazing when you get more than one of these glove moulds how they all look the same. Um, to be honest, often all the... Um, did I say glove mould? I meant mother mould. All the glove moulds often look very similar as well. Um, once you get two or three of these, like, like this, and they're in pieces and they're in a box, and they're all in pieces and you're looking for a specific mould it's it's really difficult to work out which is which so um, so I always write the name of the sculpt on the outside of the mould <laughs> just a little thing really right okay before we start cutting into the seam it's a really good time to just check around for any weak bits in the uh, sculpt in the in the moulding now there's a bit there that I can see that it goes down into only probably one or two layers of silicone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add some silicone to that part and let it cure just to give it um, a little bit of extra strength. Because once you've taken your sculpt out it's really difficult to mend Mend, uh, not impossible, but it's more difficult to uh, mend the um, the mould. Um, so I'm just going to pop some extra silicone in there to reinforce it and uh, let that cure. Just see if there's any other parts. These little, what I call rock pools. Just check underneath, make sure they're not too thin. Okay, that's all been sorted now. Uh, the, the little hole has been filled and it's cured and it's fine. You can you can mend the mould after you've used it, you know, if it splits. But once you start using your release spray, um, anything that you any silicone you put over it to um, to try and mend it often peels off because of the spray. Uh, even though you're spraying the, ins the inside of the mould really it gets everywhere so 
if you got somewhere an area that you think's weak you're better mending it before you start using your release spray because it's more likely to uh, to, to, to stick. I mean that's stuck tight it's a bit sticking out there but um, that's stuck tight there whereas if I'd have already um, used the mould, sprayed it there's a good chance that would come out uh, you can mend things, I mean sometimes when I'm getting the, the baby out of the mould I'll have to put a little cut say in the bottom of the foot or in the, bottom, in the palm of the hand and then every time I use the mould I'll seal it up again like I seal up the back seam but each time you do it the chances are you'll have to redo it um, that's just how it that's just how it is um, okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut um, a seam in the uh, the thickened part now the seam is not just a straight line um, I do the seam in a pattern like so that it can it can go back together again like a key a key pattern like that so that when it when it fits back together again you know that it's uh, it's fitted in the right place it's not just going against each other and then coming apart it'll actually lock together um, but you, you you put silicone on it as well to, to, to stick it but each time um, it's easier to lock so I'm going to start at the top I hope you can see this but um, just cut through to the sculpt I'm really dreadful with standing with with knives. As if I, if you've watched any of my videos before, I get really edgy with um, surgical blades because I'm really I'm always cutting myself, and they're really really sharp. So. through to the bottom obviously some areas are thicker than others And then I stop short of the the bottom of the spine, um, well, in the area that is still thick. That way, the whole of the spine, the whole of the seam, is in the thickened area. That's probably as far as I need to go. Maybe a teeny bit further. Not right down to the bottom. I don't. I find it's easier just to stop there. Okay, so now we can take our sculpt out. So I'm just going to go off a bit. I'll do this. So the first thing I take out is the head and I try and keep the head in one piece because I like I like to keep my heads I don't know why I uh, I just do there he is so it's just a case of taking the sculpt out of the uh, mold you can see that's the inside of the head and we take all these bits out the sculpt always, well for me, the sculpt always breaks up so if the mould doesn't work you know you've lost it really um, but try not to worry too much it is going to be okay as long as you've done the mould properly if you haven't well yeah you will you will lose it but the chances are uh, just watch the wire Always, always try and get the wire out in one piece before before you start messing with the bits because uh, it could go through the mould
we are, the other wire. And wiring the legs. Right, all the wire pieces are out, so that's the best bit. That's the the, uh, the part that can, as I say, the, the wires can can go through the mould and completely pierce it. So once the once the wires out, you can relax. So everything's out except for the the forearms and the and the and the legs. So these you have to just work work the way out. I tend to do moulds too thick to fully turn inside out unless I absolutely have to, so I prefer not to. So I try and um, work, work the sculpt out with my fingers um, rather than start pulling it inside out because it, it, it can stretch a little bit and you can tear it if it's not. And my moulds usually too thick really to easily turn inside out. It doesn't mean you can't do it but I prefer not to. Certainly at this stage his foot's out so I have to make sure all the little toes are out. It's so easy to leave a toe in and um, and then you pour it and you can't work out why one toe isn't coming out in your silicone each time and if that happens it's often because there's a toe left in. With, with the larger sculpts you can kind of count each toe coming out one at a time, make sure that all five are out, but this isn't too many pieces really to do that. I can feel I can feel the toes. I think they're all out. There we are, little toes coming out. little willy behind. Pull all out, just the arms. Same with the fingers, make sure they are all out. Very easy to leave one behind or more. And then when you pour your baby, your pour consistently comes out with one finger missing. And um, that's often the reason why, because there's a, there's a little clay finger left in one of the fingers. everything in that one. Oops.
when all the sculptures out a lot of people what they do the first thing they do is is put their mold in a bowl of hot water hot soapy water and wash it um i don't usually do that it's just one of those personal preference things i you always get bits of clay on the inside um little bits and pieces, you know it's it's never clean but i find it, i i prefer to brush it brush it out really well with a soft brush and try and get rid of all the bits and then I'll pour it. Um, I prefer not to get the mould wet um, for the simple reason it's really difficult to dry um, and if you get a bead of water in a finger or in a toe it will completely ruin your pour. So rather than risk it I prefer to leave it dry. Um, not every time, but most times. Right, I think everything's out. I will give it a really good brush. Um, get rid of all this rubbish. But basically that's it. That's my that's my William mould. So that's all we have left of little William. So when when I've um, put the seal back back to get the seam back together. Um, and put him back in his, his glove mould. Um, he should fit nice and snug, absolutely perfectly. Like so. And with the, the front part on. Like a, like a little tortoise shell. So I'm going to go and clean the mould and uh, get ready for pouring. <laughs> 